much shooting condition? Do you have a lot of time? And how was it on location? Um, it was incredibly athletic. You know, uh, it wasn't intellectual, um, which was sort of by design. You know, we, uh, you know, when you sort of combine water and children and animals and, you know, 110 degree heat and mosquitoes and you end up with a very chaotic set, you know, you can't exactly, you know, I think, I think part of the idea of, 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 we have this film collective called Core 13 and one of the principles is really that we're going to live the story. We're not going to like find the easiest way to shoot something. We're going to find the way that's most realistic that we can possibly go about shooting it without hurting anybody. Um, and so, um, you know, you're oftentimes like you, you know, you, you go into sh scenes with like 15 beautiful storyboards and then the water's moving in the wrong direction that day and the boat breaks down and the kid gets hungry and the animal falls asleep. And then you have to like <laughs> react to all those chaotic elements all the time and try to still get the essence of the scene that you were trying to get despite these crazy chaotic things happening. But that's not like a, a sore point. It's sort of, that's kind of the idea is that the film is going to react with the world and that you're going to somehow get more of the realism or, or the kind of, you know, um, humanism on screen than you would if you just shot it on a green screen or something. How did you get such an emotional response at the end? The performance, it's actually very amazing, obviously not computer-generated tears. Um, how, how did you, as a director, was there anything you did to encourage your child actress to... Yeah, yeah, it was a mess. It was, um, uh, well, it, it was, it came from, the reason I thought I could pull that scene off was because of an interview I did with the father, where he had this one event in his life that anytime he thought of it, he would literally burst into tears. You know, it was so painful and so visceral to him. And so we had this incredibly emotional night in the bakery, you know, in one of these interviews. And, um, you know, I told him, you know, we're going to use this scene once in the, in the, when we shoot the film and we will only use it once. Like I promise we'll only go there one time because it really like, he'll get migraines after he thinks about it. It's like a really a physical experience for him. And so, it was really him that kind of led that emotion on set, was him kind of talking about this experience he had, which is very similar to the scene that's in the film of losing a father or losing a parent. And it was so heartbreaking to kind of live that, you know, that, I mean, literally every single person on set was crying. I mean, the boom operator, I'm like six inches away from her weeping. There's a monitor with producers that are all crying. And, you know, the cameraman's like shaking the camera because he's crying. And, you know, she was really the last person to, uh, and, I, and what I told her was like, don't cry, you know, you can't cry. And then it was everybody crying around her. And it's, and it's what I love so much about the performance is how hard she's trying to hold it in. And then she can't, you know, and so it was, it was, it was a lot for her. It was about creating environments to walk into, you know, where she could really, it always had to be kind of like a game. It had to be kind of like playing pretend but it had to be very immersive. And so on set, we would all kind of go to a place and then we'd bring her in. And she was able to kind of sense our energy and, and feed off of it. And, and it was what Dwight was saying and just the, the environment on set. But, you know, it was definitely the hardest scene of all the like animals and children and water and pigs and everything. It's like, that was by far the hardest thing to do um, with, for all of us was just to go to that place in public with a bunch of people around and cameras rolling and things like that. It was, it was really very difficult. Originally, uh, at the end of the movie, or you know what I mean, was it chronologically? Yeah, 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 yeah. That was always, that was always the end. I mean, I remember <laughs> this is like, uh, you know, it was partly for me. It was partly what Dwight was saying, but it, but I remember being in that scene and trying to get myself to cry. You know, because you know, you're everybody there is trying to push themselves to perform, and I, I remember one of the things that I used on a take that we, because the whole thing is like you cry and then like you don't get the take and then you have to reset the camera and then you have to cry again. It's hard, you know. Uh, but I remember one of the takes, I thought about how horrible the film would be if we had bad performances in that scene and it just started bawling, you know. <laughs> <laughs> how does the film collective work? Uh, how does the film collective work? Um, it's not it's not quite a collective. It, it's, it's really, a, it's kind of an idea about 
how to approach a film where you, it, it's a lot of things I've talked about, about this sort of fluid script that can adapt to locations and actors coming in and, and different elements. And it's a lot about giving agency to all the different people that are working on the film instead of sort of executing a vision that's on paper. You're kind of giving people much more abstract tasks where you say, you, you teach them about the character and then you send them into the woods and you say, build this character's house, as opposed to saying, build me a house that's six by four with this type of a wall and I want to be able to light through here and be able to, you know, um, remove the ceiling so I can do this. You don't, you don't do that. You say, here's who Wink is. He, he's this, you know, guy that believes in being a man. He, he doesn't want anybody's help. He doesn't want to go buy anything at the store. So you teach them about the character and then you send them into the woods and then they come and then you walk into the woods one day and then they, somebody's created their idea of what his house would be. So you give a lot of agency to the individual artists to kind of create their own vision of a story that you've written. And so, and it's a lot of people that kind of just love that, doing that. We've done it a couple times on short films and this was the first feature. And, um, you know, there's like a core group of us, but it's it's a much more of a mentality or like a, like a code of behavior than it is like a club of people or something like that. I was wondering, uh, having lived in New Orleans, uh, how would you describe the general atmosphere in, in the Middle East and the surrounding areas right now? And second question, um, was it, was it really made in that area? And if so, on which part of um, the county? Uh, well, the mood in New Orleans sucks right now because there's a storm in the Gulf and it's heading right at us. So we're like in this story. I don't know. Yeah. So I'm like running out of here. I was wondering, wondering about yeah, I mean it's you know it's it's uh, you know it's the seventh year anniversary of Katrina, when Hurricane Isaac is going to land, and it's uh, it's pretty horrible, you know, and it's 2008, like pretty much on the anniversary, there was Gustav and Ike, and you know, I mean that was a lot of what the film was about was not like a looking back to Katrina, but sort of a looking into the future of just this constant life under storm under the threat of storms. And so that's what's going on right now. Everybody's buying gas and water and evacuating or not evacuating and, and making their kind of battle plans. Uh, you know, so it's it's scary stuff, you know, um, right, right at the moment. And um, this film is really shot all the way at the bottom. Like if you go, if you drive all the way south and like a little bit west, um, you know, there's about five roads that go down from Homa uh, to into the marsh, and this is in South Terrebonne Parish, um, Montague, Ile de Jean Charles, and Pointe -Chen. and it's basically when you drive all the way down, you get to the levees, and then you cross over the levees to the unprotected side of the levees, and then you have um, these towns that have basically been cut off from the world. Similar, you know, they're not similar to the bathtub, but they are uh, experiencing like a very same, very similar. Uh, fate, you know, they've been kind of abandoned to the, to the water. Um, and, um, you know, I, I don't know, I mean, I know that, I know that they've already mandatorily evacuated all the towns where the film is shot. So all those people are in the shelters that you see right now in, in the film, you know, that's, that's, that's happening as we speak. How much has been said in terms of uh, distribution of that film in Europe, particularly in Germany? Will it hit mainstream cinemas? Under what title? And um, maybe you know, you know, the, the, the 18 rating of the display outside that was just the test of your best default, or was it real? <laughs> um, the film is going to be released in Germany by MFA, uh, um, and I, I think it's going to be in December. About the rating, was there a rating sign? I didn't see yeah, that. But, the but I. Outside, there wasn't 18. So out, yeah, no, this is only Fantasy Film Fest. I'm sure the film won't get an 18 rating. Yeah, because this would be commercially really a disaster, actually. No, but it's going to be released, yeah? So tell everybody how great the movie is. I'm sorry if anybody was disappointed there was a lack of, like, nudity or heads getting cut off. How did your career develop? Your film career? Huh? How did your film career develop? Um, this is it. I don't know, you know, uh, you know, but, um, yeah. Uh, but, but this, this was launched out of a short, is, is the, is the answer, you know, I, I made a short called Glory at Sea that you can, like, YouTube, uh, 
that had a lot of the same actors, a lot of the same approach. Um, it was about New Orleans, and basically this company called Cinereach saw that film, uh, found me, and asked me what I wanted to do next, and I got this crazy opportunity to make this film with no, you know, they didn't care that there was no genre, they didn't care that nobody had acted before, they were these very young, brave, actually the, the head of the company is from Munich, uh, he lives in New York now, but they were just as crazy as we were, and uh, just wanted to change the paradigm, you know, and, and that was perfect for us, so, you know, but basically made a short and then made this. Uh, the question is if I have a new project, and the answer is sort of. Uh, <laughs> um, yes, but uh, I can't, I don't, I don't know it well enough to talk about it yet, but it'll be like, of this tradition, you know, we're trying to we're trying to really keep our team intact and our system intact, and not kind of, uh, you know, I don't want to get like pulled out of my family and sent to some family that's not as much fun. So uh, we're trying to keep the whole operation uh, in Louisiana, the same it's going to be the same team making the film, and you know, so it'll be recognizable uh, when it comes along for sure. I have a question, because, you know, the, the slang is really strong in the movie. I, I've seen it first without subtitles. Thanks for the subtitles, yeah. Uh, it was really difficult to understand. And then there's this one foreign word popping up, cohesive. That's, so, it really was like, I was totally confused. Cohesive, cohesive. Zusammenhaltend heißt das. Ich muss nochmal nachgucken. Also, um, was it intentionally that this, this is a strong keyword for you in the movie? Yeah, for sure. I mean... <laughs> it's one of my favorite lines. Uh, do you, are you asking sort of what it means and like what it... I, I just translated. Okay, okay, okay. Um, well, I don't know why it feels so right. It's just one of those weird things that you just get really attached to. But I mean, it's... What I love about it is that it's such a beautiful word. And like the poetry of the word is really beautiful in English. And it's like this guy who's this kind of mystic that's talking to Hush Puppy like an adult that just treats her as a fellow wise man, which is what I love about that character. He sees her and he sort of immediately recognizes wisdom and sophistication, and he uses this word with her, sort of knowing that she doesn't know what it means, but she immediately senses from the way that he tells it to her that it's something that she'd like to be. And so uh, that's what that exchange is about to me, is, is him saying, like, the smell in here is like this thing that makes me feel whole, and she's like, senses that that that's what he means, and even though she doesn't know the word, she knows enough to respond in the right way, which which is very, very true of her as a person. Um, Quentin Genet, it's like, um, she would always give me a hard time, because she always knows what you mean, uh, but she'll she'll give you shit for like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm like directing different actors, and I'll say, you know, okay, your motivation is you're afraid, your motivation is, uh, you know, you're, you're happy, and I'll say, your motivation is, not to let your father throw you out of the room. And she would say, Ben, I'm six years old. Do you think I know what the word motivation means? Like, <laughs> use a kid word. But she knows exactly what you mean, but she's just, like, going to hold you to treating her like a kid, even though she's so much smarter than a kid. And uh, so that scene with those two, two actors was one that I almost didn't rehearse at all. It was like I saw them do it, and I was just like, you guys completely understand each other. This is perfect. So, yeah. Would you, uh, we have a table outside, would you, would you go and, and sign, do some signing for us? That would be great. So thanks so much for coming, thank yeah, you. thank you.